Hello, uh, I'm Anthony Weeks and it is Sunday the 17th of May and I just wanted to show you, I wanted to put it out there, what essentially has been my coronavirus lockdown project. Um, now I've essentially had all the pieces to build this kit knocking around for the last three, four years and they were just put in the box. Um, but I thought, seeing as though in this time of lockdown, and I've been locked down for the best part of a month, I'm going back to work on Monday, thankfully. Well, it will make a nice change. Uh, but I had to focus and I had to use my time well, and I thought, I'm going to get my kit finished because it can't just hang around being, being undone. Uh, and it was a great thing to focus on, anyway. So I had all the bits, so that wasn't a problem. Um, let me show you. I'm just going to turn this camera around. So here we are with a view of the, what I've termed, uh, in a tongue-in-cheek manner really, the, the Van Helsing Vampire Slayer Kit, or the Vampire Hunting Kit, whatever you want to call it. So here it is, in all its glory. Uh, let's start with the outside, let's talk about the box. Well apparently this is, uh, this is a 19th century uh, armoured post office box that they used to deliver the mail in and it's nice and substantial and I think you'll agree has the right look for this kind of project the the little wall hanger celluloid cross there if I can let me just see if we can get a better view of that for the camera This originally had a wall hanger loop on the top that was um, that was cut off and filed and it's been placed onto the lid uh, by these tiny brass tacks and it's also glued as well so that isn't going anywhere which I thought was a little bit of a ni nice touch and gives people a clue of what's actually inside the uh, inside the kit okay so let's turn it round and let's have a look So let's just get a better view of this. Okay, let's concentrate on the uh, on what's in the top part of the lid. And this is the small padlock which holds the um which holds the latch together. It's got the right look for the kind of box. And this was my intention for everything in this kit really, to make it to make everything right or as near date correct as I could. So Okay, let's start with the stakes. One of the most important things, I think you'll agree, in a vampire hunting kit, is a good, strong, hardwood, reliable stake. And they're nice and sharp. They've been tapered down to a real point. This was just done by whittling away with a knife, and they've turned out really well. I for it's more aesthetics than anything else i put these brass um i don't know uh reinforcers on the end um a little bit of a, a shatter stopper i don't know i don't know if it makes it stronger or not but it certainly does look nice so okay so let's go ahead and look at the other things in the kit i've got a small i guess you call it a, a pocketery apothecary apothecary or whatever the word is i can't think of the of the word now um okay this little bottle here is unlabeled it's pretty clear what's in it it's uh it's coarse salt just in case in case the practitioner wants to draw themselves into a into a circle of protection i thought that would be quite a nice feature to add this other one, if you can see it there, powdered garlic. I made my aged uh, labels for everything. And I actually watered down the ink so it didn't look too, uh, so it looked old and there wasn't too much of a contrast. But this is actually gonna have powdered garlic in it. For obvious reasons. The duck, oh, vampires don't like garlic. I, I do, 
I don't have anything <laughs> anything against it whatsoever. Um, okay, uh, I have these five forged, really beautifully made, five forged iron nails. Now these are apparently for pinning the vampire down in the coffin after he's been dealt with. So there are five of those. Of course, one of the most important things, a little crucifix. Now this can be either used as a wall hanger or um, I believe it was a pectoral crucifix. I mean, they're called a pectoral crucifix because they hang in the middle of the chest from around the neck. Um, in between the uh, pectoral muscles. That's uh, where they get the name for a pectoral crucifix from. So we'll put that back in there. There's no need to take that and leave it completely out. Okay, so you'll notice the uh, Bible, at the back, the antique Bible, and also the uh, Book of Common Prayer. I always like to see these as the, the source material and the instruction book. That's just the way I've always seen them. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong in that. I think that, that would be quite a fair assumption. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but how do you get those out? They look fairly locked in place. Well, they are. Um, don't forget, when the case is all closed, um, it's going to be stood on its end that way. So everything wants to be, even in the bottom, as you'll see, uh, as you'll see shortly, it wants to stay in position. So... Really, when it's when it's resting on this end, as it's put down as a case, everything does stay in position, and it makes a really good job of that. But let's remove this little brass clip here. Now, this is intentionally tight because it keeps this little gate open. As you'll see on the inside of the gate, it's all purple velvet as well, and that provides you with the access to get to your source material should you need it. Okay, that leaves us with one more thing in the in the lid, in the upper part, and of course, got to have a knife for decapitating the vampire after you've dealt with him. And this is a, this is an antique John Noel. I think you can just make out the engraving on the blade there. There we go, Bowie, John Noel. Um, and I believe the date is, that's John Noel and Sons, Sheffield, England, established AD 1700. So a very, very old firm and a really, really nicely weighted, medium sized Bowie knife there. Very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, so let's just close that up so it doesn't, so it's not in our way. Now let's concentrate on what's in the main area of the case. Okay, so I'm just going to move this camera in a little bit more and pan down maybe so you can see everything that's in there. Okay, I believe that's a good view. Right, so apart from all the stuff we have on the top, we've of course got our mirror. Can't have a vampire hunting kit without a mirror. This, this is an antique item I picked up from a charity shop or thrift store, as they're known in the States. And it's a real, and it says on it, printed just there. I don't know if you, if you can see it. Real ebony. So it's a lovely little beveled glass antique ebony mirror. I like that. Very nice indeed. Very, it's, got, it's got the right look to go in anything like this. Okay, two small pillar candles that live in this compartment here. Um, and there is actually a tinderbox on its way because there's a little bit of extra space left in there for the tinderbox. So that's going to go in there when it comes. That's the only thing I'm waiting for to, uh, to, to finish this project, really. Okay, so moving on. We have the, and this is locked in. This is all really nice and tightly locked in. And that's due to its hexagonal shape. Our traditional old blue, um, poisonous not to be taken. Our poison bottle. 
Now, I've labelled this up as Wolfbane, or Wolfsbane as some people call it. Really, it could have been any kind of, uh, it could have been any kind of poison, but um, Wolfbane seems to be a popular one in these kits. As I say, it could have been anything, but it was it got labelled up as Wolfsbane, and again, a nice ageing on that label. with a nice old uh, italic, italic-y font used to label it up. Yeah, really nice. And it's got a little cork stopper, uh, which is tied so you don't actually lose the cork. You don't want to be losing the cork on your poison bottle. That wouldn't be much good. I think health and safety would have to say something about that. But there you go. Okay, so let's look at the counterpart to the stakes, and they have a very similar look. You know, I wanted to use the same colouring and the same binding, um, so theoretically, we, when your hands are covered in blood, you still have a good grip on it, and it provides a really good solid grip. Um, two small custom-made brass crucifixes on the head uh, to give a good sign of its intention yeah good blocky heavy mallet there okay so moving into the corner here we have let's see if we can get a, a better view of what's going on in there for the meantime Okay, there we go. So we have a, a, another small um, apothecary here. Um, I'll get it out and I'll get it out and show you. And I was wondering how to lock this in place actually, because there is a cavity underneath that's got something else in it. And I had the idea. I thought, how about if I hold it in place with locking pins, and I've got brass hoops down the side, one set on the top box. One on the lower, one on the top, one on the lower, either side. These just pull out, and they're all they're all uh, drilled gemstones. This is amethyst, uh, due to its spiritual protective properties, and also it's it's kind of exactly the same colour as the uh, as the velvet that I use for the for dressing the box. And I think that was a that was a really nice a really nice touch. So that's this part of the box unlocked, and we'll take this orange one out. Okay, that's that unlocked. Now this is tourmaline. Now, again, uh, drilled. The gem is drilled, and the the brass rod is set in there. Another really nice little locking pin. This is tourmaline. Uh, some of the spiritual properties of this stone are to give you to give you courage in uncertain situations um, makes you a bit braver and a really nice looking stone so I chose those two for the for the um, for the spiritual properties but don't forget it is all about spiritual warfare or so the folklore says or so the mythology says. And these kits were made in the 19th century and supplied to travellers to Eastern Europe because they were genuinely afraid of the vampire stories. Not to say that the vampires existed, but these kits existed and they were sold to travellers. And I put this together, I wanted to make it look as authentic as I could. So let's have a look at what we've got in here. So this just locks in and it is in nice and tight. I Wanted everything to be to be fitting well. So, okay, as you can see there, we have our uh, traditional our holy water bottle there, and this I put a clip on that just slides out of the way. So you can either use this as it's still in the case, or you can use it out of the case. Now these actually do contain the the, the herbs that are indicated by the labels. Uh, this one has bone set or bone set. And we have angelica root. 
this next one all using a all using a matching font and these labels aged up really well to be honest and i can give you a really good tip if you want to put labels on on bottles like this you don't have to use sticky labels in fact don't use sticky labels because they'll become unstuck use a watered down uh pva adhesive if that's wood glue and you can saturate this and mucky it up as, as as much as you like but if you use wood glue to stick paper to uh, to stick paper to glass Believe me, that isn't going anywhere. You, you actually have a job roughing the edges up. And in fact, it looks a little bit better if, you know, the tattier the label, the better it looks. But these are stuck on so well, these aren't coming off. And the same idea was used in the, uh, in the previously seen bottles. So, uh, what do we have? Bone set or bond set, as some people call it. We have Angelica Root and... Last but not least, Agrimony. Now, if you're wondering why I've used these these particular um, these particular plants, these particular herbs, you need to look into the I don't know the spiritual mythology that uh, that comes hand in hand with with uh, with vampire hunting or, or vampire. These are all repellent to vampires either physically or spiritually. I didn't want to go down the track of using everything that everybody else uses because that would be a little bit predictable. But I'd, honestly, I did my homework with these. And, um, you know, so, uh, so if you have one of these kits and you're wondering what to fill your bottles with, those are three good contenders. I also wanted to put this kit together so theoretically, if you did have to battle a vampire, everything in it would work. And that was very important to me. This is what I mean about, about the locking lugs, where the pins go through. They're just loops of, of uh, brass wire actually coiled around these um, with the pilot hole drilled. And they're actually just screwed in, you know, because you have a twist in the, in the wire as well. And it just screws in and they're in nice and tight. They aren't going anywhere, and they sit really nicely against the uh, against the purple velvet. So, okay, let's put that to a side, and let's have a look at what's in here. Now, I think you can just see it. As I said, there is a cavity in there, and this again, it sits nice and tight in here. I didn't want any leeway whatsoever. I didn't want things rattling around inside the box, so I made everything to um, really quite good tolerances. Now this is your, another holy water bottle. But this, when it's full, is actually intended to be wielded as a weapon. You know, so you can flick that holy water out. Be gone, Satan, and apparently that's how it goes. So a really nice looking thing, um, found on found on eBay, and a really really nice addition to the kit. So let's leave that out for now. Okay, so that leaves us with little box here uh, with a, a tiger's eye gem on the top. And that again is set into the lid on a small brass post. So it's not just glued on there, it's all done, it's all done properly. And inside there, ooh, what do we have here? Let's have a look. Okay, personal protection. Um, this can be used as personal protection, wear it around your wrist, carry it around with you, or use it as a door hanger. Could be used as a repellent, maybe to stop a vampire from coming into a room. I don't know, but there's another uh, antique pectoral crucifix there. And also an antique sacrament medallion. Because the repellent to the host as well. So you have the you have the, the cup or the grail with the with the host or the, the holy bread at the top, representing the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, and again, Jesus on the other side. So, 
Uh, theoretically, that would be a great repellent. And there's also another one of those here in the spare space I have down here. Just with a slightly bigger crucifix on this one, but the same sacrament medallion on that as well. So theoretically, two door hangers, um, two lots of repellent protection. So let's have a look. Let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, quite important because you gotta know when it's dawn, yeah? Also when the sun's coming up and going down. Now this is, it's all date correct. Uh, mid 19th century um, fusey pocket watch. So that is date correct as well. You know, I didn't want to be putting a new one in and kind of, I uh, don't know, spo just spoiling the illusion. So everything had to be as right as I could get it. So nice, and it does work by the way, it's just unwound. As I said earlier, theoretically, I wanted everything in this box to be to be able to be used um, against, I don't know, maybe a vampire attack. Or for the purposes of hunting one down. Uh, some more protection there. Nice antique set of robberies. Uh, um, <laughs> robberies. I was thinking of what it's made of. It's abalone, uh, abalone, abalone, whatever, it, whatever it's called. But really nice little antique set. Um, Rosary is there and also in here another uh, another bone antique set of rosaries another really nice really nice example there so plenty of protection physical and spiritual <coughs> excuse me now Talking about protection in the more physical sense, I've heard people say, oh, yeah, but why include a gun in a vampire kit? Because the 19th century vampire kits did come furnished with a gun. And theoretically, um, if you were to shoot the vampire as it laid in its grave in the daytime, you had more time to carry out what you needed to carry out. It wasn't meant to kill the vampire. And I've noticed a lot of people saying that they've added silver bullets in these kits. That's, it's kind of like blaring the edges between werewolf and vampire mythology. As far as I'm concerned, silver has as much effect on a vampire as it does on you. And that's uh, virtually nothing. But, okay, this lid comes off and... Okay, so what do we have in here? Here we are. So we have a lovely... Lovely little mid 19th century um, muff pistol. We know it's after 1830 because, well, before 1830, the people were relying on flint locks. Now, this is a percussion pistol because a percussion cap goes on there. And then your black powder goes in there. And then a piece of wadding goes across the top. And one of these. One of these bullets sits in there and it gets pushed in with a ramrod. So that's how the so that's how the weapon is set. Um, under UK law, this isn't deactivated. This is a real 19th century muff, muff pistol, and it would theoretically work with black powder. <clears throat> Under UK law, it is legal to own one of these if they if they are part of a, a collection or a showpiece or part of a curio, um, because it's an antique pistol of an obsolete character, and this isn't going to pose any threat to the public. So, really, really nice little little pistol there, just about the right size for these. And these kits actually were supplied with these little pocket pistols, just like this one. Very nice. So just looking looking at the kit a little bit closer, you can see we have our rounds of ammunition at the back there. I'll put that 
piece of wadding back in there. And this is actually your... Again, all date correct. F. Joyce was still uh, a London company, was still producing these in the latter part of the 19th century. And these are actually your percussion caps that actually... Uh, form the first little explosion that lights all that black powder. These are, these are inert. They don't have any explosive or striker in them. Uh, they're just there for. They're just there because they need to be. But but they are inert. They are uh, they are dead. They, these won't fire. And of course, to go with the pistol, we have a nice little, a nice little Sykes powder loader. Um, you put your measured amounts into your gun. I so say you can set the amounts. Of course, it's a very small gun, so it will take the smallest amount. Uh, that's issued against the barrel. It opened, and it puts a set, set amount of black powder into your gun. So there we have it. It's been my... Been my... What, what has been? <laughs> An absolute labour of love this past month stuck at home. And that has been my attempt or take on a 19th century vampire hunting kit. And it's been really difficult. So again, I, I hope you've enjoyed that little display. Um, as I say, it got put together because I wasn't doing anything else. Uh, I didn't have any excuses, so it had to get done, but I'm so pleased it has, it has been finished. And as I say on the end of some of my videos, if this has inspired you to make your own, um, I would advise you, you know, just don't copy anybody, follow your heart with this. Because it's, um, you know, they are a piece of art at the end of the day. And a great thing to keep, a great piece of curio, and what a great talking, uh, what a great talking piece as well. And there is actually the history to go with these pieces. So if you take your time and accrue what you need to, don't rush it, build it right, you'll have a really nice um, collectible and quite valuable piece. Uh, yeah, so as I say, hope you've enjoyed that. I'll hope to see you all again soon with another with another build of something. Goodness knows what it may be, but they do come periodically, maybe next year or in the next couple of years I'll be showing you something else. But I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, and if you're going back to work next week, still observe the social distancing rules. Very important. Take care, bye-bye.